This is the Mealtime Magic and Mayhem podcast. I'm Trisha Clark, your host, cooking coach, and kitchen mentor. We're here to talk about all things food, wine, travel, cocktails, and mealtime memories. So many memories are made around the table. We all know mealtime can be stressful, full of chaos and mayhem, but it's also the universal connector, a catalyst for communication and connection, and a time to create magic and memories. So many of our memories are tied to food, and I can't wait to share some of those stories with you here. I'm here to share ideas, inspiration, and stories to help you experience mealtime with a dash of magic and just a sprinkle of mayhem. You can expect new episodes weekly, including a mixture of interviews, personal stories, and some fun conversations about our adventures and misadventures in the kitchen and around the table. I hope you walk away feeling inspired to try something new in your kitchen or around your table to create more connection with your friends, family, and beyond. Thanks for being here. Hey there, my fellow food enthusiasts. It's your host, Trisha Clark, and I'm beyond excited to welcome you to another episode of Mealtime Magic and Mayhem. Today, we're about to embark on a journey into the wonderful world of eating in season. So get ready to discover why embracing seasonal eating is not only good for your health, but also it's good for your wallet, and it builds a great sense of community around you. So here's the scoop. We all know that food has this incredible ability to nourish our bodies and ignite all of our senses. But have you ever considered or tapped into the magic that can happen when you dive into the realm of eating in season ingredients? Trust me, it can be a culinary adventure like no other. So imagine you're strolling through a bustling farmer's market surrounded by colorful displays of fresh produce. There's the sense of all the herbs. There's the hustle and bustle of people. There's colorful displays of fresh produce. You've got artisanal cheeses. You've got farm-raised meats and tons of homemade goodies from jams and jellies to soaps to ice creams at our local farmer's market. You name it. I swear they've got everything. You can almost taste the Christmas of the apples the juiciness of the tomatoes. And then it's just a treasure trove of flavors waiting to be discovered. And to me, that's really where it gets exciting. When you embrace eating in season, you open up a world of possibilities. And you can really also ignite a spark of culinary creativity if you just allow your sense of wonder to open up. So suddenly then you find yourself exploring new ingredients, experimenting with flavors and transforming your meals into something fun, exciting, and sometimes a work of art. It's like uncovering a secret garden of taste, textures, and super fun aromas. So I'm just going to hit on a few things today. And then I really want to bring you an episode at the beginning of each season to really highlight the foods that are in season and give you some recipe ideas. But for now, let's just talk about the incredible benefits of eating in season foods. First and foremost, eating in season is a beautiful gift to your health. And Mother Nature really knows what she's doing. And when fruits and vegetables are in season, they're at the height of their nutritional peak. It helps you eat from the proverbial rainbow so that you get all those nutrients, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants that nature intended in the first place. It's like a burst of vitality on your plate. But here's the icing on the cake. Eating in season can also save you some serious cash because when produce is in abundance, it's often more affordable because it doesn't have to travel so far. It doesn't have to undergo all those extensive preservation methods that add so much unneeded stuff to our foods. So not only are you treating your taste buds to the freshest, most flavorful ingredients, but you're also giving your wallet a break. It really is a win-win. It's also a fantastic way to foster a sense of community. I love that when you support local farmers markets and connect with people who grew your food, something really magical happens. You become part of a, a larger tapestry woven together by a shared love for fresh seasonal ingredients. You're supporting your local economy. It really brings a different level of appreciation when you meet the people who work so hard tirelessly every day to bring you this fresh, amazing food. It kind of feels like joining a food-loving family that celebrates the richness of local produce and the joys of gathering around the table. And as you know, that's really what Trisha's Bites of Life is all about. So my friends, are you ready to infuse your meals with the enchantment of eating in season? We're going to explore some seasonal specific ingredients. I'm going to give you a couple of recipe ideas, and we're going to unlock the hidden treasures that each season has in store for us. So hang on, we'll jump into the next section. 
and we'll talk about the health benefits and some mouthwatering recipes. In this next segment of our journey into the enchanting world of eating in season, we're diving headfirst into the incredible health benefits and mouthwatering recipes. I feel like make your taste buds do a little a little happy dance. So grab your aprons and let's get to it. So we talked about when you buy fruits and vegetables at the farmer's market or even just in season, even your grocers are likely to have in-season fruits and vegetables at better than out of season prices. They're also at their peak ripeness. So they're going to have amazing flavors. And again, I said like at the peak of their nutritional value, uh, it's kind of nature's gift. So let's talk about summer berries. For example, they're bursting with all those bright colors and sweetness, but they're also really packed with antioxidants that help combat free radicals, support your body's natural defenses. I love to think of it as nature's superpowers, right? But then bountiful vegetables have their own unique place as well, from crisp greens to hearty root vegetables, and then all those delicious herbs and spices that really just add a nice punch to all of your food. You not only get to go on this culinary adventure and ignite all your senses, but it's also kind of like a culinary medicine cabinet. But what I love most about eating in season and shopping that farmer's market is really discovering a world of culinary possibilities. They always leave me craving more. I love getting fresh watermelon, maybe grilled slabs of watermelon and feta, and then top it with mint and a drizzle of balsamic. Or in the fall, it's really a cozy butternut squash soup with a hint of cinnamon and apple. They really celebrate the warmth and the feeling and the flavors of the season. But it also pushes you to experiment with seasonal ingredients and then unlock a whole new level of culinary creativity. Once you let the flavors and textures of the in-season produce really guide you, you will find yourself concocting unique dishes that showcase the beauty of simple ingredients, simplicity in the methods of cooking. One of my favorite ways to get inspired in season is honestly at different restaurants that really focus on sourcing local ingredients. It's a great way to get inspired and then go seek out that produce and see what you can reproduce in your own kitchen. It's almost like creating an artist's palette. I mean, you become the maestro blending colors and flavors. And that really opens up your mind. It also opens up conversation because interesting food creates conversation. It just does. Whether you like it or don't like it, it creates conversation and interest. All right. So lastly, I want to get back into really talking about the farmer's market. And I know I keep referring back to it. I love the experience of a farmer's market. But keep in mind, if you don't have a farmer's market, you can find in-season flavors at your local grocer. They all bring in whether it's that sweet summer corn or they have a larger assortment of tomatoes or berries. You'll notice the influx in and out of season of what really becomes prevalent. And take that as your cue as to where you can save money and really lean into the season's flavors. So let's talk about the community of farmers markets for a moment before we sign off for the day. Farmers markets are more than just a place to buy fresh produce. They're these really cool bustling hubs of community spirit where these farmers and artisans and food lovers come together to celebrate local agriculture, craftsmanship, really that sense of community, that hard work that they do day in and day out to create these foods. And I feel like it gives us another level of appreciation for what goes into the foods that we purchase and put into our bodies. Stepping into a farmer's market is like stepping into that that uh, tapestry I mentioned of color, scents, and flavors that really awakens your senses and can really ignite your passion for good food. I love that direct connection between the producer, the farmer, and the consumers or the shoppers like myself. You have this great opportunity to chat with the farmers themselves, learning about their farming practices, the how long their families have been farming, the story behind their produce. And, and really even gaining valuable insights into how to prepare and enjoy the seasonal treasures that they offer. I find I just kind of wander through a farmer's market and I look for the things that catch my eye. And I often see vegetables or an herb or quite often like a green or a lettuce that I've never used. And when in doubt, 
I love to ask the farmers for guidance. They're a wealth of knowledge, and they're often more than happy to share their expertise. I mean, this is their labor of love, right? So one of my personal favorites to find in like mid to late summer are these lovely little baby eggplants. Sometimes they're darker and purple. Sometimes they're like white and purple striped, I guess you could say. And when I wasn't sure how to prepare them, the farmer was like, you just just roast them. You can keep it really simple. They're not hard. And their skins are more delicate than the traditional Italian eggplant. They're tiny, I would say, the size of a kumquat. They're not even the size of the palm of your hand. They're they're almost bite size. When you cut them in half, they're about the size of a good small potato. So what I love to do is I love to get those little baby eggplants and I drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil, sprinkle them with salt and pepper, and I simply roast them in the oven at 350 degrees for 45 minutes. The result is tender flavorful, and it pairs beautifully with a little dollop of ricotta cheese, like maybe just a teaspoon on top of each of those little eggplant halves, and a little drizzle of honey. They're absolutely to die for. That's one of my favorite recipes. I'll be sure to put that recipe and then also the recipe for the watermelon feta salad I mentioned earlier in the show notes or a link to the recipe so you can try those this summer. They're both two great summer recipes that really scream refreshing and light and flavorful. All of that said, the sense of community that thrives at farmers markets is truly special. And like it's a place where strangers become friends. You start talking with people about how beautiful the berries are. The next thing you know, you're exchanging recipes, sharing cooking tips, and forging connections over a mutual love for fresh seasonal food. For a lot of people, this is a social activity they look forward to, like our farmer's market is hustling and bustling with people and flesh flowers and dogs. And it really is this weekly event. It's not just a shopping center. It's it's so cool. Their hearts are open to the shared experience of nourishing themselves and their loved ones. The energy is just, it's just electric as people gather their, you know, reusable bags and baskets brimming with all of the things. They not only provide a sense of community, but they also support the local economy. And I love that they promote sustainable farming practices. By choosing to buy directly from local farmers and artisans, you're you're really contributing to the preservation of small-scale agriculture and really supporting local community, the preservation of generational traditions, right? One other way we can protect the land and reduce our carbon footprint associated with long distance transportation. But let's not forget about the treasures you discover at the farmer's market. You can find heirloom tomatoes that are amazing in a tomato pie or a tomato soup or just sliced into a lovely caprese salad. You can find artisanal cheeses, find that fresh mozzarella or that buffalo mozzarella to go with those heirloom tomatoes, grab some fresh basil. You've got an instant salad made locally. As you stroll through the market, you might encounter finds like homemade preserves, freshly break bread, handcrafted goods, all of those little things add an extra touch of magic to your culinary adventures. And I find when I sit down and I'm serving those, I start talking to everybody at the table about who I met, where I found them, right? And that creates, again, another level of conversation outside of how is the weather today? How was your day? How's work been? We can really talk about much deeper and impactful subjects when we bring other conversation topics to the table. So to make the most of your farmer's market experience, I have a few tips for you and then I'm going to let you go till the next podcast episode. If you want the best experience at your farmer's market, arrive early to get the best selection. Bring your reusable bags and be open to trying new ingredients and flavors. Look for something that looks interesting. Grab it. Then if you don't know what to do with it, shoot me an email, ask me a question, Google it, think of it as an experiment and an adventure. Always, always don't hesitate to engage with the farmers and artisans. They're passionate about what they do and they want to share it with you. So ask your questions, seek recommendations and let their passion inspire you. That, my friends, brings us to the end of our journey through the world of eating in season. And actually, it's really just starting the journey because I hit on a few topics today. But in a couple of weeks, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper and I'm going to come back to you with what products are in season right now. We are in early stage of summer. And so I'm going to come back to you with some recommendations on the produce to look for, how to pick the right produce 
and some recipe ideas in which you can enjoy them. I hope you've been inspired to embrace the magic of seasonal eating, exploring new flavors, and really finding ways to connect with your local food community. Remember that every bite is an opportunity to savor the beauty of nature's bounty and to nourish not only your body, but also your soul and your families. Thanks for listening. Thanks so much for listening. And if you enjoyed this episode, please go hit that follow button, subscribe, leave us a review. And if you're ready to change what mealtime looks like for you, breaking that cycle of chaos and having more fun in the kitchen, build some confidence and discover your love of cooking, schedule your free dish with Trish call at the link in the show notes. We'll chat a few minutes and you'll walk away with personalized strategies to take your mealtime routine from tired to inspired. See you next time.